So you're probably wondering um, just why solo and why now? Well, you know, as you know, solo is the discipline uh, and it's the basis of everything that we do in baton twirling. So when we're doing solo, you can go to the next block there, um, the next slide, Julia. Yeah, so the, the, the building blocks are very important, as you know. And I think that the novice classification is exactly where everyone starts. And it's the most important level that we have. Why? Because if they get off on the right foot, then that makes their job and your job as a coach and as a, as a, as a judge a lot easier if they're trained properly and they know what they're doing at a novice level. You know, from, from a coaching standpoint, there's so many students that I've received from the coaches that are great, great uh, teachers of basics. And it makes my job much, much easier as, as a coach to be able to develop that. And when you're coaching someone on the novice, at the novice level, isn't it wonderful to be able to take your time and to make sure that the, the, the students are being trained properly and correctly and they're successful and success uh, breeds more success and they're more enthusiastic in order to continue on. So why now? Why are we stressing all of this now and starting at the novice level? Well, you know, the USTA is very, very uh, involved in the incorporation of all of our, our departments to service our athletes. You know, the coaches are on the same page as the judges and the judges are on the same page as the technical. And we all three in all of those three departments work together to service the athletes. So how many times have you ever said, if you're a parent or if you're a, or a, um, a coach, what are those judges looking for? What does USTA expect of these kids at the, at the novice level? What are they supposed to do at a competition in order to be successful at a, at a novice level? Well, this is the first in the series of the solo events that actually gives you, the viewer and the interested person, the, the idea and the whole knowledge behind the collaboration of all three of these departments. In other words, we come to you as one voice we're speaking to you from the same lens, and we are going to give you all of these answers that you may have often wondered about, um, which I think is um, really wonderful. And it's something that we in USTA are very proud of, you know, because all of our professionals are very trained and certainly we're here to help you. And we're here to cer certainly service the athletes uh, first and foremost. You know, we endorse that relationship among the athletes, the coaches and the judges always, that is, that is our main job. So we are here as one voice. So to begin, I'm going to speak about the solo discipline. And we're, another thing that we're very proud of in USTA is that each of our disciplines has a concept summary, which is basically um, the description of the event. So in solo, you, you know this already, the solo discipline is the baton dominant event comprised of a balanced representation of three twirling modes, aerials, rolls, contact material, all enhanced with body skills and simultaneous blending. It's the job of the choreographer to make sure all three modes are connected and demonstrate continuity and flow. That's a biggie, continuity and flow, especially for tonight. The athlete should utilize performance qualities appropriate to the solo event. Now, you know, when you're, when you're talking about an athlete at a novice level, we're talking about basic, basic skills. When, when the athlete starts to toss the baton in the air, when they try to do a, a turnaround, when they try to do various types of uh, releases and catches, we're, that's not really what novice is. That's not how USTA endorses the, the novice level. What we're talking about is the basic general handling of how that athlete is going to learn to be friendly with that baton and to utilize it in a, in a way that de demonstrates continuity and flow and the connection all follow those rudimental skills that they've learned. And for, for this reason, you have to look at the novice class in a little bit of a different lens than we would the beginner and certainly intermediate or advanced, you know, keeping in mind that the judges are looking for basic handling, you know, the continuity and the flow and how they connect the, 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 um, the moments and how they connect all of their twirls. And of course the coach is looking for this 
development of the circle, I'm sure you know, or maybe you didn't, but you know, baton twirling, especially at the novice level, is a study of circles. If you look at your students' basic handling of connected rudimental skills in a, in a routine form, you're gonna see the baton is in constant circular motion or should be. So everything is a circle. And I think that if you remember that, that will help you to uh, construct programs for athletes at a novice level. And it will certainly help you to make corrections to your athlete. How many times have you seen athletes try a thumb flip, for instance, and they catch it and they, they stop the baton or lock it against their arm? Rather than doing a catch, a basic catch, going into a reverse figure eight follow through. I mean, we, we rarely see that at a novice level, but we really should because the, the circular path of the, the baton in rotation and the catch in the right hand and the reverse figure eight is a continual circle from the trick of the toss, the catch and the reverse figure eight. You know, that's the follow through. So if you just kind of keep in mind that it's all about the circle in motion, then I think that that's gonna be a little bit of a key for you in just in terms of uh, what you're teaching and then what the judges are gonna be looking for in, in that regard as well. Okay, so next we do um, the, important, the importance of this level. Okay, this gets these kids off on the right foot, doesn't it? You know, you wanna teach them correctly. You wanna not give them tricks per, per se. You wanna give them basic skills and better handling that they can understand how to grip the baton, how to keep the baton in motion. They're gonna learn wrist flexibility. They're gonna learn a lot of these different things that are gonna be very, very easy. And that's good. It should be very easy and something that is uh, very well achieved for them. The connection of the skills, obviously, as I said before, creates the novice routine, not the tricks. So therefore, we in USTA and at the novice level stress, number one, for the novice kids, contact material. Number two, isolated roles. And last on the list are the aerials. Um, we do not endorse a variety of catches and releases at a novice level necessarily, unless that they are ready for that. But if they're ready for that, they're probably going to venture out into that next level, which is the beginner category. So that whole sense of continuity and flow and how they connect those basic handling skills is first and foremost at a novice level. Next, we have, these are the key tips for success. You know, sometimes in baton twirling, we think repetition is, is maybe not such a good thing. At the novice level, it's a very good thing. We want to see you know, those, the kids that are, that are, are going to do flourishes and flourishes maybe in repetition or, or a couple of reverse figure eights, keeping the baton in motion. Maybe they only learn and or have only achieved, a, a, you know, a handful of skills, you know, that are, that are just basic full hand work. So you're going to repeat those skills, but what's happening is it's connected, you know, everything is that continuity and that flow of the circle. So what it's, what's happening is, yes, it, it is repeated skills, but it's, it's for a good reason. It's for the proper um, perspective of it. So um, the other thing is, is that you're going to limit at the novice level, you're going to limit body work. Now, just because you go to a competition, just because you see competitors that are going to be trying illusions and cartwheels and walkovers and what ever else that they're going to do with their body doesn't mean that these novice kids should be doing that. You know, if they cannot do that, keeping the baton skills in the circular path moving constantly, then they're not ready to add the body work. As soon as they add that body work, they're probably going into the beginner level. So let's just kind of keep that in mind as well. You know, the judges are going to be looking for that at that novice level. The coaches should be doing that at that, at that level for sure. You know, because that's what, again, I can't uh, stress this enough. That is what teaches the general handling. And all of you old timers out there like me, you all know that we used to say the word general handling all the time. Well, we, we kind of know what that is, but now we're really trying to define it in specifics here that is going to be very useful from, a, from the perspective of the coach, the judge um, as well. The other thing that is kind of important is that the C and the B compulsories, if you are involved in the CAS 
program, the competitive achievement uh, system, you know that the C and the B compulsories could be very useful to you in establishing a criteria um, and a syllabus for your students in terms of basic handling. Many of you already have something in play where you know what you're teaching at a basic level. Okay, that's, that's great. But if you don't and you need a little bit of guidance, I would suggest that you look into the C and the B level for some help and maybe give you some ideas as to, as to what actually to teach. And lastly, you know, it's not about the tricks. It's not about the tricks at this level. It's simply about the, the, general, uh, the general handling. And, you know, we're, we're going to see some good general handling here right now. And we have from the coaches department, um, we have Corey Kenyon Cruz, who's actually going to show us what USTA endorses as a novice combination. And she's going to do this in terms of a uh, kind of an abbreviated um, routine as such. So at this point in time, I'm going to turn this over to Corey and she's going to twirl with us. So Corey, let's take it away. Okay, hi. Um, okay, I'm going to show you um, just some sections that we came up with that are going to be a strong um, foundation for your athletes to develop their technique, to um, start using repetition to um, create that continuity and flow that Dale was talking about, um, to connect twirls very smoothly and ultimately lead to control speed and then confidence in your athlete. Um, and we're just going to start right off the bat, of course, with our contact material, because contact is going to be the most um, important mode for your novice twirler. Um, and in that, um, in this first section, it's just going to be basically full hand. So our contact is going to be full hand. Um, and we're going to start thunder the ball with our um, hand in the center of the baton. And I'm just going to talk you through some of the baton and we'll add body as we go. So we're going to start with a basic reverse, a, starting with the outside loop first, and we're going to point it to your um, athlete's left side, and they're just going to go two reverse eights, outside, inside, outside, inside. Okay, so two simple reverse eights, they've learned that already. And then up to the top where we can see our baton and a nice flourish. And then we're going to just follow through with that same big circle, and we're going to do it again. Two reverse eights. And then we're going to do one flourish loop, but end up over on the right side into wrist twirl. Okay, now you might teach it wrist twirl in your class, in your rep class, all kinds of ways. Now we're going to do it up high. And as soon as you're done with that wrist twirl, we're going to push um, down into what I learned when I was in Blue Dogs as a flying gate. And in the CAS system, they probably, it's just a big loop. I don't know what the the term is, everybody has different terms, but we're just gonna go point to the back, one reverse loop on the outside and float over the top. And we're gonna end behind the small of our back and we're gonna do the hook portion of the whip and then a full whip. All right, so we're gonna put together some reverse direction twirls with some forward direction twirls so that your athlete is now learning to combine those directions and keep it moving. So this is going to develop their circles and their wrist flexibility. And it's the baton is going to be complemented by the body. So the body is going to go lunge to the left. And then we're just going to turn me forward with that right foot and point to the front. And then we're going to lunge again on that left side. And then we're going to shift our weight and lunge on the, on the right side. Then we're going to just take that left toe and dig Okay, and we're in plie with both feet, and that's going to be for our flying eight. And then we're just going to set that heel down in third position, and then once more, time you forward with our right. So let's combine those things. Um, also, thinking about freehand and freehand, believe me, at the novice level, is something you're going to remind your athletes about every step of the way, every count. They're going to you're going to say freehand. Okay, so um, as we combine those things, we would we would go lunge, nice free hand, and then do our two outside, inside, outside, inside, two reverse legs, and a flourish up top. Bring it down and do it again. Outside, inside, outside, inside. Bring that across, and let's do our wrist twirl up high. Three free hands. It could be there. It could be an airplane. Whichever way is good for your, for your athlete to remember. 
And then I would bring it into the chest as they do the dig for the blind gate, only so they can really concentrate on getting that loop on pattern. Sometimes that's hard. Okay, so really focus on that and then bring it out again into third position and a nice full whip with that time. Okay, so now we also need to probably provide your athlete with a pose. Okay, and so in our novice, I would say that that pose is front facing, that it's balanced, and that they can just really concentrate on focusing on performing to the judge. This is their moment to start. So they could have a tondu, maybe third position. Even, even a simple pose in parallel is okay at your novice level. Okay, um, so let's just start and do that much, and then we're going to go on. Okay, so they have their pose, front facing pose. Their foot can be a couple of places. Okay, they, they can add an arm if they're good with that. If they're a dancer, it could be something like that, but I would keep it very simple. And then we're going to start and do our lunge reverse aids and our flourish. And our lunge reverse aids and our wrist roll. And our high and foot and nice full whip. Okay, now we're ready to go on to making some left hand contact material. Okay, so we're going to do our passes here. Um, we're going to do right hand spin three times. Okay, so one, two, three. And of course, there's lots of ways you can do passes. We're just going to do it the way that it is in the compulsories. So one, two, three, center of the baton, getting it to that left hand. And we're still probably using our thumb to ball technique, which is just simpler. Okay, from that place, we're just going to make our, um, our circle, start with our left hand, gonna go down by our toes, and we're gonna go two reverse eights in our left hand, out to the left side. Bring it up and over across, and go figure it, okay? Bring it back down, and do two reverse eights again, and then back up, and now we're gonna do a match hand pass in the back. Match hand, thumb to thumb, turn around, and we're gonna do one more full whip, and our thumb release, here it comes, our big topper to this section, right into a nice reverse aid as we follow through. Let's add some feet to that. So we were in Tanju for our three passes. Okay, so then from here, we're just gonna leave our toe and then we're gonna change our weight to a nice lunge. We're gonna transfer our weight, so shift our weight back to our left and we're gonna just step around and play pull. And then Susu, because that's part of our movement technique, if you're using the compulsory system or it's just a nice relevant position, or if your athlete is maybe not ready with ankle strength to do that, it could be third position. It could even be parallel first, okay? So let's put that all together. So we're gonna go one, two, three, and then our left hand reverse eight. Bring it over the top. Think about that free hand, figure eight. Left hand reverse eight two times, up and over the top, pass match hand, and then we pull up big, and we're trying to get that nice susu, and a thumb toss follow through. And that could be a nice basic full hand um, contact section for an opening for your novice twirler. Anything so, about that, Neil? Yeah, that was great, Corey. Um, I, I think that that really brought home the fact that we are working and studying circles and that flow of circles, because everything that you did literally was a circle. And that circle did not stop one moment throughout. And it was pretty, pretty simple. Um, so it's very achievable for kids at the novice level. Of course, you made it look really great, Corey. So, you know, you're, not, <laughs> yeah, you're, you know, uh, the, the novice kids are going to struggle a little bit in keeping that circle going. But I think if they're, if you keep bringing that home to them, that it's everything is a circle, then, you know, that's, that's even, that's even better. So good. So I think that that really helps. That really helps. And, it, and I think that the, um, I think that the, the use of the two hand front is also a very good tool to learn the thumb the uh, the thumb roll, which is the the first step of learning a thumb toss, obviously. So that's really important to include that. So all of these skills you can see are just the the basic foundation that a beginner now would take those skills and you could build, you know, from those. But they have to have these first, okay? But the circle is the important thing. I love the circle. Thanks for the circle. Okay. All right. Let's continue on. Okay, good. Um, and then after that full hand contact material, your athlete may or may not be ready to do some finger twirls, a finger section. Okay, it, it depends on how advanced your novice kid is, or maybe their maturity level or their age. 
Um, and it also might be a place where you can put a swing section. Okay, there might be some swings that you can do and incorporate a nice, easy swing section. That might come next. Um, but it's whatever it is, it's in that contact section mode until we get to the rolls. And the rolls would be the next big section. Um, so for our rolls, we're going to do single element rolls. Okay, and we're going to do them the way that um, that they are in the compulsories. So we're going to start with a flourish, and we're going to do an elbow roll. When you teach the elbow roll, it's hard for kids to kind of understand that it's not really rolling over your elbow, like not out here, but it's really way back here by your muscle on the outside of your arm. So. Um, so that's kind of a misnomer as far as our elbow roll. Okay, so when they do their elbow roll, they're gonna catch it on top the way that the compulsories are. And then we're gonna do an arm roll. Okay, so still try and get their thumb on the outside of their arm, a little high on their arm, so that, that when they do their arm roll, if they have good control in the center and we're um, setting them up for success. And then we're gonna flourish out of that. And then the next thing we're gonna do is some hand rolls. We're gonna do four of them. And we're going to go hand roll and follow through with that flourish, and then really a reverse eight, and then hand roll in the back, still reverse eight, hand roll in the front, and figure eight over to the back, and do one more hand roll. As soon as you catch that hand roll, don't have them choke up to the middle, but let it just stay, and so we can do our arm slide, which again, that um, thumb is really going to press on the outside of their um, arm so that they can receive that baton, etc. All right, and then from there, we're going to do one reverse eight in our left hand and figure eight it over to the back and do more hand rolls in our left hand. So, hand roll to the back, figure eight to the front, hand roll, reverse eight to the back, hand roll, figure eight, hand roll, and then we're going to do one more arm slide, the same exact way that we did our, our other one. So, pressing their thumb against the outside of their arm and pushing so that they receive the baton pretty much center as center as they can. But we're going to also then follow through with a nice flourish. To end that, then we're going to do a topper roll. For um, our novice level, we chose to do a dog paddle, or maybe some people call it a ladder, double hand roll, and we're just going to go under our hand and catch it on this right side. And then that's it. So simple rolls to put together in a series. Now, when we get to our rolls, it's really important that our body is really strong. Our posture and footwork should be um, stable so that we're building a really good foundation for their roles. So we're gonna do it very basic feet. Um, it's very balanced, their shoulders over their hips, over their legs, okay? So everything is very, very centered. Um, and you can choose to have their, their feet in first position or in third position, first parallel, um, if they're ready to do it on one leg, squared off tondu. Okay, so we're gonna try, try it with the tondu. So we're gonna go tondu, on the elbow roll, and then just leave it there for the arm roll as well. Okay, follow through. Then on the hand rolls, we're just gonna still leave it there for the hand roll. We're just gonna do a little pivot and do the hand roll in the back, come around to the front and touch, uh, talk about to the side for the last hand roll. Leave your legs there for your arm slide. And then you can, you can bring your leg front for your wrist, uh, reverse eight in your left hand. Then when you get ready to do your hand roll with your left hand, you're just going to leave your leg there and just have your athlete pivot a little bit and twist the back so they can start their hand roll there. And just easy does it, feet are just balanced. And then you're back to that tondu for your arm slide to end that. And then I would just bring that foot behind into third position so that you can do your nice dog pedal for the end. Okay, so nice and simple rolls. We'll do that all together one time. Okay, so remember you can do it here. Okay, if you want, they can have their feet in parallel. So we have our elbow roll, then our arm roll, always with a flourish in the middle. And then we have our hand roll series, four hand rolls, and arm slide. And then we are going to do our reverse eight, so we make sure that we're continuing. And then our four hand rolls in our left hand. And once again, arm slide to finish those up. And then maybe go position for our top of it. Okay, and that's one example um, out of the millions and trillions of some very simple novice level rolls. Great. Yeah, that's great, Corey. Now you use both hands, I noticed, but you know me in a circle, right? I love a circle. 
So I was watching for it and it was there. So from the beginning section with the contact work and then the uh, the role section, we start, we got that circle going. We love yeah. it. Okay, that's okay. that's really good. So right. how do you keep that circle going for the next okay. section? Then the next thing that happens is really, we're going to ch change now to some flat patterns. Um, and sometimes at the novice level, it's, I don't know, it's, it's a little challenging to get that, but I'm just going to show you some, some fun ones. So first would be really simple, um, just like a swing, pass, and pass. And there we are, flat, ta-da, magic. Or maybe um, you want to do the cradle one. I always like, I always like the cradle. Cradle and ta-da, it's flat, and you can add body. So they can do a curtsy, they can do a nice lunge, maybe a toe point, all of that. Now, if they want to even do bigger, they could do that with a uh, end swing, okay? And that could have all of those same feet, all right? So, so it's opportunity to be creative there. Um, maybe you have a novice level athlete who's a little bit athletic and they're really, they like the challenge. So maybe they could, they're the ones who might do the little pretzel, okay? So that's always fun on pattern to the front. And then it changes pattern as you pass and end up flat, ta-da! Okay, so anyway fun stuff for getting to flats. Um, then our flat section, I'm gonna show you a flat section that I actually teach in my rep class, the very, very first week of class. Um, it's something that they can really do um, within that first month, for sure. Okay, so um, no matter how good their flat spin is, they can do this flat section, okay? So we're gonna go flat spin, and it's still, still a circle, it's just sideways, right? Parallel. Okay, so we have our horizontal wrist form. Okay, um, and then we're gonna we're gonna turn, slide to the end, and turn. Okay, sometimes that's hard. If you were at Shannon's thing yesterday, you might see how she teaches that. Tight and then open. Okay, so we have slide to the end. Now we're gonna do some lasso loops. We're gonna go over and under and over and under and over maybe about five of them and a neck wrap. When they get to the neck wrap, because Younger children have shorter arms. They can't quite reach, you know, until seven, seven, seven years old when they can reach their ear or something like that. All of you teachers probably know that, um, what age that is. Um, they can just lean forward a bit and just let it roll right into there. So it's, it's no problem if they have a little bit of pattern issue because they're gonna get that by doing it a lot and being comfortable and confident and being finally releasing it and letting it be flat. So after the neck wrap, they're in their left hand, okay? Like magic, and then we're gonna be in our left hand flat spin. And then I make, make a pancake with their hand, toss it up to the right hand, and then do right hand flat spin, okay? That's going to develop into a flat release, okay? The important thing is that they just open their hand and then they keep it twirling when they get to the other side because a flat eight is hard, okay? Sometimes it's not a novice level twirl. Okay, they need a lot of shoulder dexterity. They need really good wrist flexibility, plus an understanding of how that loop happens and goes back toward them. Now, Shannon did that again yesterday in her little thing. She did this one, like it's a tappy, and then she did it in the middle, and then she just told them to take off one hand, and then she went back to the middle, and then she told them to take off the other hand. Well, that's a really good way to get to there. So we might be able to do this one right away, and then we might eventually build it up to doing that flat release with the flat, with the uh, flatting. Okay, so then from there, we're gonna just do a little palm spin. Always there, it could be a half, okay? It's just building a little bit of trust, just open that hand and catch, okay? And then we're just gonna pass for the end. All right, and then our body work for the flats can be really, really simple, but also that you could, this is a place where you could add fun body. So we're gonna go lunge to the left, lunge to the right, and then all you CIS um, teachers out there maybe have already started to work on the feet for a one spin. Maybe not, but this might be where you introduce it. We're just gonna spin, or they go lunge, lunge, and they walk around, and that's okay too. And then we're gonna put our feet in first position, parallel for our, um, our big last seat. And we're gonna leave them there for a long time until we're going to do our palm spin and then on our palm spin we're going to just go down put our left knee down and do our palm spin down low and then we're going to go back and talk about that 
position or is this relevant? Try and turn out, try and hold the core so we have good balance and build the ankle strength because they need that for spin tricks, right? Okay, so let's let's put that all together. Never forgetting about the free hand. Okay, ready? So we're gonna go. Lunge to the left, lunge to the right, slide to the end of the turn. And our last two loops, it's okay to tip over. Someone tip forward, tilt a little bit, and flat neck wrap. And then we have our left hand flat spin, pancake hand, right into our right hand flat spin. Now, maybe you can add more body work here before your pump spin, or just go down into your pump spin and spin. And then after that would be your very ending little contact display of whatever your very best thing for your novice athlete is. That was great. That was great. Corey, you stole my trick. Which one? <laughs> the pretzel. <laughs> I learned a pretzel when I was six years old, and I, yeah. I think I did it until I was about 11 or 12. So <laughs> we got to, and I see that Wendy, yeah, Wendy's on here too. And Wendy said she likes yep. a pretzel too. Hey, got yep. a little pretzel, right? Yep. Yeah, yep. that was great. But you know, I was, I was imagining myself on the ceiling, looking down at you doing that flat section and looking for, what was I looking for? The circle. So um, yeah, and that circle was, that circle was, was ongoing. So that, that's great. Now, you know, I'm sure that everybody could see and recognize that there was repetition there that was for a purpose. It was for development. You know, mostly it's wrist flexibility for sure, right? Because these kids need that wrist flexibility in order to connect anything. So that was great. So you can see that the de the emphasis is not on the tricks, but it's simply on the general handling and the, and the connection and the continuity and flow of these fun fundamental twirls. Now, before they even get to this routine that Corey taught us today, they're gonna to be doing some things that are gonna be fun things that is just gonna be user-friendly with their baton. So, you know, and most of you probably have some kind of a syllabus or some kind of a class that, that introduces kids. I know that last night on the, the, uh, the Coaches Network, Shannon was teaching a lot of the fun things that she does even before they get to a routine level. So, you know, there's even the pre-novice um, el um, element that, that you need to consider as, as a coach as well. But what we're use, what we're very proud of in USTA is that with all of the judges now that are on these calls and, and that is supported by the technical department, you know, we're all on the same page and, and the judges now can appreciate when they see these things in a competition uh, setting, they're going to be able to reward that uh, for sure. Which brings us to the next um, pre presenter. So, you know, what are the judges looking for? Next, I'm going to present Dawn Shepatek, and she is representing the judges department, and she's going to um, tell us about what those numbers on that chart mean. So if we can pull that chart up, you might not even realize this, but the judges have, have criteria, and they certainly have the numbers um, to, to uh, base those scores on that you see being flashed or sometimes just recorded on a sheet. Dawn, tell us about all of this. Hey, good evening, everyone. I'm Dawn Shepatuck, and um, this is part of our sheet. Obviously, there uh, uh, the other levels will be there as well, but um, this is kind of our security blanket at the judges' table. That's what I call it. Um, so you can see it. The first thing you should notice on the side: the concepts, participation, growth, special achievement, outstanding achievement, and mastery. Those are very similar to the. Um, levels of learning as you go through an education. As a teacher, I see that in my classroom every day. So um, in talking about the novice level, the participation and growth are really those introductory levels to the sport. So um, those are probably gonna be maybe your rec fun classes. You know, they might not be competing yet, um, but they're just getting introduced to the sport. So participation, just being in a baton class, getting used to holding the baton, understanding, you know, like Corey said, holding it in the center and all of those skills being developed. And then as you move into the competitive arena, you usually start in, in the growth special achievement range. And in those areas, they're really, the skills that you saw Corey um, demonstrate tonight, a lot of those are from our competitive achievement system in the compulsories. And a lot of those are from the C and B. And I think there's even a few from B1 that you could notice in there. And all of those skills are developing the wrist flexibility, the continuity of the baton. And those are things that we're looking for as a judge 
to see that they've been trained from the start correctly um, to have the follow through in the circles as Dale was talking about. Also that their, um, the idea of speed at the novice level isn't really um, that important. It's just like big tricks. We're not really looking for that. The speed is gonna be developed through their proficiency in the skills as their wrist flexibility, their understanding of right, left, forward, reverse, as that develops, that speed will come naturally to them. Um, and then as you move up into outstanding and mastery, uh, you're gonna see that those um, skills are comfortable for them. You are gonna maybe see them um, get a little faster, more comfortable, uh, maybe start attempting some other skills um, but you're just really going to see the right and left developed equally. That's an important thing. You also should see forward and reverse. Um, pretty much all of the things that Corey showed us tonight are really good qualities for a novice twirler. So um, if you don't have anything else to add, Dale, we might want to take a look at an athlete that is performing at the, in the novice range. Sure. You know, I, I just want to add that, you know, you look at all these numbers here that some of you that maybe have never seen this before this chart and every number that you see um, is a positive number. It's, it's a number that reflects some kind of achievement at, as, at a, all these different levels. So there's nothing negative about these numbers. You know, we don't take away numbers. We simply give numbers away. We give the athletes the numbers. So that's what this is, this is uh, that chart reflects. Each of this, the uh, webinars that we're going to be showing you uh, later on in each month, when we go to the beginner, intermediate, and then the advanced, we will go through the ranges so that you can kind of get an inside look as to really what the judges look at and what they look for there. So Don, do you have anything else that you're going to share with us? No, but I'm glad that you brought up about the buildup because, you know, when a, a child or an athlete comes into competition and, you know, they'll see a 1.5 or a 2.2, that's not a bad score. That's just where they are developmentally and there's nothing wrong with that. So I think it's great that you brought that up. We're always looking to build the athletes up. So you are correct. Those scores are all positive. So um, if we wanna, after we see the video, we can also talk about some of those qualities as well and why she receives the score that she does. Okay, great. Is that good? Yeah, I think Julia, if you can go ahead and put the, um, if you can put the link in the chat room and so everybody can watch this. So we're, we're doing it this way rather than showing it on the screen because, because it plays better. It's really hard on the Zoom. Um, it's hard with, to, to view a video through Zoom. So go ahead and watch this video at your own um, convenience on your own device there. And then uh, after about a minute and a half, we'll come back and we'll, we'll talk about that. Go ahead and, and uh, watch that now.
Okay, I think that uh, I think she's just about finished uh, there with her routine. So, Don, do you want? Do you have any comments about uh, about watching that uh, novice athlete? Sure. So I just wanted to talk you through some of the things that we might have seen as judges. And I don't know if you always realize what we're looking at. But um, so when I watch her, she has some good twirling skills in the right hand. Um, she utilizes flourishes and figure eights. Most of her twirling is in the forward direction. She does attempt to do whips and she does repeat skills a lot. And the whip actually shows us that her wrist flexibility is still developing. Um, it's very weak. As she comes out, she does attempt to do a thumb release that isn't quite over the thumb yet. Um, and then she also, she does a very nice job with her rolls. Uh, I know you can't tell when she gets down. I could tell that her hands were paddling a little bit. Um, so actually I think her rolls are one of her stronger features. And then in the flat section, she does attempt to use her left hand if you notice. And you can see that the flat, you, her wrist, it's very hard for her to turn that wrist. Um, but she does have a lot of variety with the right hand. She does some swings. Um, I can see some of the compulsories in her routine. She actually uses the matched hand pass um, to keep going back to the right hand. So there are some good qualities and she is developing. Um, so in this routine, she would be somewhere in the special achievement range right around a 1.5. I mean, you could see her get anywhere from 1.3 to a 1.6. I mean, when you're watching this live, you know, but um, we had her around a 1.5. And I think one way for her to build up more points that would add points to her score is to work on those left hand skills that we see her using both hands. But um, it looks like she's starting to be trained in the right direction. It'd be interesting to see where the thumb release goes because that's not quite there yet, but she does use it. Um, and I don't know if there's anything else you wanna add, Dale, but I thought she was a good example of a nice little novice athlete. Great. Well, the purpose you know, of, of, of this uh, webinar is just to kind of show what the coaches do at the novice level and then what the judges do when they see that work that the coaches do at the novice level and what all of those numbers mean, you know, in terms of, of that. And I'm sure those, those numbers are very interesting for um, parents to know what those are, are about. I mean, the athletes probably don't have a clue nor do they really care at that point what that number means, but it's a good barometer for them, you know, to, to gauge their, their achievement. But the idea is, is that, every number that they get is a positive number and it's a record of achievement. So therefore they really sort of can start the idea of competing against themselves. This week I got a 1.7. Well, maybe next week I'll do a better job and I can get a 1.9 and that's a really good thing, right? So that's a way of uh, coaches reinforcing what the judges do. And it's certainly something that the coaches and the judges do in order to reinforce what the coaches are presenting to them as well. And of course, uh, Coralie Slagle, who's on the call, represents the technical committee. And what the technical committee does is they take the work of the coaches, they take the work of the judges, they, they figure out the function of it in a competitive structure of USCA and, and how it's actually uh, developed and worked in the structure of in the competitive uh, uh, scene uh, at a competition. So, you know, as you can see, you know, we have, we have, competition uh, structure, the technical department, and we have the judges department, and we have the coaches department, and we're all on the same page. And each of these seminars that we're going to offer, the webinars, I should say, we're going to bring the perspective in to each of those from those three lenses so that you understand that as a USTA, as a whole organization, that we are all endorsing and all coming from the same place. Yes, and so I think that's gonna be quite helpful as everyone is learning from the aspects of all of these various various departments. So anyway, in conclusion, we thank you for joining us tonight. That's for sure. We, we love the fact that we can talk shop with all of you as uh, I'm sure that all of you love to talk shop as well. Again, if there's any questions that you have, please put those in the, in the chat or you can just contest, contact us directly. We're happy to answer anything um, that we can in terms of uh, questions that you may have. Um, also, I wanna make sure that you understand that we do have uh, the next series will be the beginner um, webinar followed by intermediate followed by the advanced slash elite. 
So we'll look forward to that. And those are gonna be presented by various people from the, from the departments as well. Um, and then I will help to coordinate all of that. So if we have any questions, let's see, are there any questions, Coralie, that we need to, that we can answer for anyone? Nothing's shown up yet. Okay, okay. A lot of thank yous, a lot of okay, um, great. feedback, yes. Yeah, that's great. So I really do hope that all of you will come to all of the webinars so that you actually can see and feel and understand the whole method of progressive uh, qualities and, and progressive structure from the novice to the advanced level, you know, and how all of the three departments interface with each other. But anyway, we, I thank you so much uh, to our technician, our Zoom technician, which is Julia Boss tonight. Thank you to all of the departments, especially to Corey Kenyon Cruz and to Don Shepatok and to Coralie Slagle for representing all the various departments. Wishing you all a very good evening and join us next month for the beginner uh, webinar, okay? Thank you very much for coming. Thank you, everybody. Bye-bye.